Learning web development is incredibly difficult. First of all, you need to learn multiple programming languages, then you need to learn how to think like a developer, and only then can you actually start creating websites. On top of that, you also need to fight all the misinformation out there and figuring out what to learn and when to learn it. There's a million different people out there and a million different videos all telling you to learn different things in different orders. Don't learn this, do learn this, and all of that information is constantly contradicting each other. So in this video, I'm gonna give you my definitive guide on exactly how I would go about learning web development from scratch. And this is going to be covering front end, back end, and full stack web development, as well as everything in between. So I can really give you the definitive guide on exactly what you should learn and what order you should learn it in. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you. And to do that, I actually created two roadmaps, one for the back end and one for the front end that you can download using the link in the description below. And this is a roadmap that goes through exactly what you need to learn to learn both front end and back end development. And most importantly, as you can see, I have absolutely tons of links in here to videos articles, and so on for all the different topics and projects that you need to learn. There's over 200 videos linked and over 50 articles linked in this roadmap. So if this is something that you're interested in checking out and I would highly recommend it if you enjoy the content in this video, it's gonna be linked down in the description below and you can download both of these files. I have both a light and a dark mode available. Now let's jump straight into actually figuring out what we need to learn. And the first thing you need to understand is that web development is generally broken down into two sections. There's front end web development and back end web development. And then there's the idea of full stack, which just combines together these two concepts. Now, front end web development generally deals with the things that you interact with and see as a user. So if you're on YouTube right now watching this video, all the different things you interact with and all the things that you visually see on the site are represented by the front end developer. A back end developer is the one that hooks everything up behind the scenes. For example, a lot of the data is stored in databases. And there's a lot of video data that's stored inside of YouTube. And the backend developer is just making sure that all that data is stored properly and making sure that that data gets processed down to the actual client, the person that's viewing the video, you in this case. So it's just making sure that that data flow works properly and all the logic and security is in place. Now, as web development has moved further and further into the future and into the current times, we've noticed that this line between front end and back end developers has started to blur a lot with the introduction of certain frameworks like Next.js, which if that confuses you, don't worry, I'll be talking about it during this video. But the whole idea here is that you really have a hard time being just a front end developer or just a back end developer, and you really need to learn a little bit of both in order to excel just because there's so many things that are shared between the two of them. So that's why I'm going to be covering both front end and back end development, as well as what a more full stack developer is going to look like. Now in the realm of front end web development, what you really need to know to get started is going to be HTML. That's going to be the very first thing you start with. And luckily this is actually a really easy thing to learn for the most part. If you just put a little bit of time into learning HTML, you can pretty much get to the point where you can write out any HTML you want within a couple of days or maybe even a week of practice. And that's just spending a little bit of time here and there, maybe 30 minutes to an hour each day. And that's gonna give you more than enough time to actually get a really good grasp of HTML. And honestly, even that first day of 30 minutes to 60 minutes is going to be enough for you to start to really understand HTML. It's a rather small concept to learn. And that's why, as you'll notice in the cheat sheet that I have, it's a rather small section there as well. Now, the next thing you need to learn from there is going to be CSS. Technically, CSS, I would say, is an optional thing to learn when you're first getting started. You can skip it if you want and move directly into JavaScript, but learning CSS first is just going to make it a much more enjoyable experience for you. Now, CSS is just how the web is styled. So every single thing that you see on the web for the spacing, colors, font sizes, font style, all of that is managed by CSS. So if you want to make a site that doesn't look completely ugly, you're going to need to make sure you understand CSS. And this can be as complicated or as simple as you want it to be. The bare bones of CSS is really not that complicated. Learning things like Flexbox, Grid, how the different position properties work, display, padding, margin, the box model, all of these things that I cover inside of that roadmap, those are really not that complicated of topics. But if you want to take it to the next level, you can get rather advanced with certain things like container queries, media queries, animations, pseudo elements, pseudo classes, and so much more. So the nice thing about this is you can start off learning just the bare bones of CSS, really just Flexbox, Grid, and a few other different things. And then as you want to learn more and more, you can start adding in that complexity as you go, but you don't have to learn it all at once. Just get down those bare bone basics of how to make things look good, how to position them in the right place, and how to change their colors. That's really all you're gonna need to know. 
Now, the next thing you need to learn as a front end developer, and this is also something you most likely want to learn as a back end developer as well, is JavaScript. Now, this is going to be by far the most complicated thing that you learn up to this point because JavaScript is a rather large programming language. There's a lot of things that you can do in it, and it can be quite complicated because it's been around for so long. So there's a lot of older things as well as newer things that you need to learn about JavaScript. Now, the key with JavaScript is to make sure you take it piece by piece and then try to work on integrating those pieces together. The analogy that I really like to give is that if you're learning to try to speak Spanish, for example, and you only know how to speak English, you'll probably get started by learning some vocabulary. You'll learn certain words for like book and library and so on. But if all you ever did was spend time learning vocabulary, you would never actually learn to speak or read Spanish because you never learned how to connect that vocabulary together into sentences. How do you conjugate verbs and so on? That's the same thing with JavaScript. You can spend all the time you want learning all the fancy features of JavaScript, like how to create variables, how to if statements work, loops, promises, async, await, arrays, objects. But if you never learn how to combine those different concepts together, you're never actually going to truly learn how to write and program inside of JavaScript. This is why I actually wrote a JavaScript course. I called it JavaScript Simplified. I'll link it in the description if you want to check it out. But it really focuses on how do you actually combine these concepts together. And the real key here is to work on projects of varying difficulties that ramp up as you go. So get started writing really simple projects at the beginning and slowly build and add on more and more complex projects. In that roadmap that I have linked in the description, I actually have projects categorized from easy all the way to hard, as well as all the concepts you need to learn from start to finish. So you can really go through that process and figure out exactly what you need to learn and then go through the projects in order of easy to hard to really start to connect those concepts together. Now, if it was six, seven, eight years ago, that would be all you would need to know to actually land a job as a front end web developer. And that's all I knew when I landed my very first job. But now things have changed quite a bit with the introduction of front end frameworks, and they have massively increased in popularity compared to five, six, seven years ago. So you're going to need to learn some type of front end framework in order to land a job as a front end developer. Now in the roadmap, I have quite a few mentioned. Some of the more popular ones are going to be React, Astro, Vue, Svelte, and Angular. But in my opinion, I would recommend learning React. The reason for this is that React is the most popular one and there are the most amount of jobs out there for React. So if you're looking to land a job as a front end web developer, React is going to be the best bet for you because there's the most amount of resources and there's the most amount of jobs willing to hire React developers. Now the key with learning React is that you make sure you don't jump into it too early. So many developers learn the absolute bare bones of JavaScript and then jump into React. That is not at all what you want to do. You want to make sure you have a strong understanding of even intermediate level JavaScript concepts before you start jumping into the complexities of React. Because if you don't understand JavaScript at a rather strong level, React is going to make it so much harder for you to write things because you just don't understand the JavaScript that goes into React. So first, make sure you really understand JavaScript before you start to learn React. And if you try to jump in too early and you notice React is really difficult for you, most likely it's because you're missing some of those core JavaScript skills. The next key thing you need to understand about React is the idea of declarative versus imperative code. Normally in JavaScript, your code is imperative, but React kind of flips the model to be a more declarative approach. And really the difference is, is that imperative code tells you step-by-step -step what to do. Step one, do this. Step two, do this. Step three, do this, and so on. While declarative code essentially says, this is what I want my thing to look like based on whatever my state is. So instead of being a step-by-step -step guide, it just says, here is what this thing is. Now that sounds probably quite confusing right now, but once you start writing code in JavaScript and in React, it'll start to make a lot of sense what I'm talking about. And understanding the difference between the two is really going to help you excel at writing good React code. Again, I have a full course on React. I'll link it down in the description for you. This is an absolutely massive course that really helps you with figuring out that declarative versus imperative thinking. And I also have a course on CSS. I didn't mention it earlier, but I'll also link that in the description for you. Now, once you've figured out your front end framework of choice, the next thing to do is to learn what's called a meta framework. And a meta framework is just a framework that is built on top of an existing front end framework. So in the case of React, the most popular one right now is going to be Next.js. There's also Remix though, if you wanted. And maybe if you're doing Svelte, there's Svelte Kit. Vue has Nuxt and so on. Each of these has their own pairing or maybe even multiple options. I have all of these inside the roadmap that's linked in the description for you. But the nice thing about this section is at this time right now, it's more of an optional thing than a required things. Most jobs that are looking for a React developer don't really care if you know Next.js or not. 
Obviously, if you know it and they use it, it'll be nice and it'll be a bonus for you, but most people don't need you to know Next.js in order to land a job. So right now, this is something that I would consider optional, but I would highly recommend learning it just because it'll make your actual application that much stronger. So in the case of learning React, you're going to want to go into Next.js, and currently Next.js has got an app router way of doing things and a pages router way of doing things. If this confuses you, don't worry, you'll figure it out once you get to Next.js, but I would recommend actually learning both different ways of doing things, and that's because the app router way is so new that most companies are still using the old pages directory. So by knowing both of these different concepts and how they work together and how they work separately, it'll make it so that if you actually go and apply for a Next.js job, it won't matter if they're on the newer technology or the older technology, you'll be able to actually show them that you can work in both of those different scenarios. Now, as part of my React.js course, I actually have a full Next.js course that covers both the app router as well as the pages directory. So if this is the route that you wanna go, I highly recommend getting both my combination of React and Next.js course, and that's in my React Simplified Premium Pack. Package. Again, it'll all be linked in the description below. Now, the final thing that I recommend that you learn in the front end path is going to be TypeScript. And the nice thing about TypeScript is you can kind of slot it in wherever you want. I generally would recommend that you learn TypeScript after you start to learn JavaScript, but you don't need to wait until you've mastered JavaScript. You really only need to know the basics of JavaScript in order to actually learn TypeScript. And that's because TypeScript is built on top of JavaScript, hence the names are quite similar. And all TypeScript does is it adds types to JavaScript because JavaScript is an untyped language, which means when you try to refactor your code, it can be difficult since you don't have anything called type safety, helping you know what parts of your code are changing when you're making your certain changes. So TypeScript is something that most companies have swapped over to using from JavaScript because it makes writing larger scale applications much easier. So if you want to really land a job, especially going forward into 2025, 2026, and so on, TypeScript is going to be a must know because more and more companies are moving to it. But luckily, TypeScript is a rather small thing to learn compared to JavaScript, React, and Next.js, so it's really not going to take you nearly as long. For example, my entire TypeScript course, which teaches you everything you need to know about TypeScript, is only about five hours long, and that teaches you absolutely everything that you need to know. And again, I'll link that course in the description for you if you want to check it out. The one caveat I'll give you about TypeScript is I would really only focus on learning the more basic features of TypeScript. You do not need to learn advanced TypeScript features in order to write TypeScript code. Really, that's going to be more so for very advanced and niche use cases, and 99% of developers working real-world jobs only use the very basic features of TypeScript. So when you go to actually learn TypeScript, focus on the more basic to intermediate level features and ignore all of the more advanced and niche level features because you really don't need them. Now on top of learning all these different things for front end, I know it's a lot, but I would actually sprinkle in a few additional things. First of all, I would learn some type of version control. Git is going to be the most common and most popular, so I'd recommend learning that. Also, I'd recommend learning what JSON is, which is pretty much something you have to learn in order to learn JavaScript. And then I would also maybe spend a little bit of time focusing on security and testing. Just figure out how people can try to break your applications maliciously so you can write secure applications that they cannot break, as well as writing simple tests that actually make sure that your application works. Because in more real world projects, security and testing are some of the most important things in them. Now, if you spend the time to learn all of this, I guarantee you that you'll be able to land a job with those skills as long as you have a decent resume and portfolio because that's really everything that an employer could actually possibly want out of a junior developer. Now, when it comes to the backend side of things, a lot of the stuff we're gonna be learning is rather similar. For example, first of all, we can completely skip HTML and CSS because those are only used on the front end. They're not used on the back end at all. When it comes to the back end, you can actually choose between multiple different languages. So you could choose JavaScript if you want, and if you're going to be learning front end web development, I would recommend using JavaScript for the back end as well, just because you only need to learn one language that way. But there's other options you could use. You could use PHP, you could use Go, you could use Rust, C Sharp, Ruby. It really depends what you want to do. But again, I would recommend going with JavaScript if you're also planning on working on the front end. Now from there, you need to choose a web framework. Similar to how you choose React or Angular or Vue for your front end, you also need to have a framework for your back end. And when it comes to JavaScript, the most popular framework is going to be Express. So I would recommend learning Express with JavaScript, and this is going to be inside of something called Node.js. Node.js is just how you operate and run JavaScript on an actual back end server. So when I say Node.js, I really just mean back end JavaScript. And Express is the framework that allows you to create a web server for your actual application to work on. 
So that's the thing you're going to need to learn. And the nice thing is, is if you already learned all the front end stuff and you've learned JavaScript, you've pretty much learned 90% of what you need to know. All you need to do is add in a few extra nuggets of knowledge for Node.js as well as for Express. But those concepts are so small in comparison to the entirety of JavaScript as a language that it's really not going to be that big of a leap for you. And I actually have an overall Node.js course. It's completely free. I'll have it linked in the description for you. It's on YouTube and it's also going to be in that roadmap. And that roadmap also includes a ton of different projects for you to be able to practice all of these backend concepts. Now, once you've learned your language of choice, as well as your framework of choice, the next thing you're going to want to figure out is a database. Now, you don't need to be an expert in databases. There are full-time engineering roles specifically for database engineers and database specialists. But as a backend developer, you need to have at least a passing knowledge of how a database works, as well as how you can query data from it. And there's going to be two different types of databases. There are SQL databases and there are no SQL databases. I personally recommend using a SQL database as I find more companies, especially larger scale companies, use SQL databases. And I find that they just work a little bit better for most applications, but you can really choose whichever one you want because they share quite a few things in how they work. Obviously the implementation is quite a bit different, but the overall knowledge you gain from working with one or the other is relatively overlapping between the two. So if you have no SQL experience, but the job is looking for SQL experience, that's going to be mostly okay. Now, the really great thing is that's kind of all the unique stuff that you need to learn as a backend developer, because a lot of the other stuff is shared with the front end. For example, if you decided to use JavaScript for your backend language, learning TypeScript would obviously be the next great step. And the TypeScript that you learn on the front end is exactly the same as on the back end. So you don't need to learn anything new if you're going from front end to back end. Same thing if you want to use a meta framework like Next.js. As I said, the line between front end and back end developer is really starting to get blurred. And that's because of all of these different meta frameworks, because these meta frameworks act as both a back end and a front end at the exact same time. So you have one developer that's writing code both for the back end and for the front end at the exact same time. So as a back end developer, I would recommend looking into these different meta frameworks. Now, if you're going to be a purely back end developer with no front end at all, you don't really need to know these meta frameworks that well. So that's why I recommend this as an optional thing to learn, but going and spending the time to learn something like Next.js is really going to help push you to the next level because now you have both backend skills as well as some front end skills that you can learn because you've learned both Next.js as well as the more backend focused skills. And then just like with front end, some of the other things like version control, JSON, security, testing, and all of that, you should also learn when it comes to backend. Some of the things you may learn will be different. For example, security on the back end is quite a bit different than security on the front end, but otherwise they're very similar between the two. Now I know all of this information can be quite overwhelming and even just looking at the roadmap can be incredibly overwhelming because there are hundreds of different topics and projects and videos on these roadmaps. But what I really want you to do is just take a deep breath and really understand that this is not a quick process. It's going to take a significant amount of time to actually learn all these different skills. And don't be surprised if it takes you over a year just to learn all these different concepts. And then you have to build up a resume and a portfolio and start applying for jobs. So this can be a very lengthy process, but just know that where you are now versus where you are a year or two from now, when you actually learn these concepts, you're going to be a completely different person. And you're going to look back on who you were a few years ago and be so happy that you stuck it through and put in all the extra work and effort to get to where you are now, because having a job as a web developer is incredibly rewarding, enjoyable, and is an absolutely great career for both financial and work-life balance. So if you're interested in taking this seriously, don't forget to download the roadmap. It's completely free. I'll have it linked in the description for you. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.